this catastrophic failure of the Gates belt, but it's just not the whole story. My name's John Freeman. I'm traveling around the world with my dog, Mira. Thanks to you guys, I am riding on a Gates belt. Yeah, I, I did a, a video a while ago. I, I mean, you know, equipment, no fail is the right word, but it comes to the end of its lifespan and it breaks. And, and it did that while I was riding. And I thought, oh, that'll be really interesting for, for viewers of our channel. The mechanical SRAM one by XO components, you know, a, a 10 to 52 or something like that on the back, small chain ring on the front. You know, if you, if you ride them like I do, and, and so in a year, we get 20,000 kilometers, almost 25,000. So it's the kind of amounts that people might drive in a year, much like your wife commuting. It's a tremendous amount of kilometers. I mean, most people don't put that much on their car unless they're commuting a big distance for people to get a, a, an idea of, of how much it is. I want to spend as little as possible. So I try to change the chain early if I can, because as it stretches, as it wears, I'm changing the pitch. Good, you guys are nodding your heads. That's great. And then, <laughs> um, and then I'm wearing the cog set faster or jockey wheels. And then what I would also find is that I would separate to that, I'm replacing bottom bracket. And now integrating the pinion system, especially with the Gates belt, even if I wear this stuff out and I have tried aluminum rings, but the stainless steel ones, I look at them and they don't look really, I mean, they're dirty, but they don't look like they've been used that much. I mean, I could, I'm sure I'd, I would need a brand new one to compare them to, to see the, the wear. And I already have a tremendous amount of loaded kilometers through, through horrible conditions. So I, I definitely echo what you're saying about the, the belts. I think the squeaking noise because of its pitch and because we're used to it being so silent the rest of the time it seems like oh it's it's this horrible noise but if you ride like you said with someone who has a derailleur has a chain and you're in dirty conditions it's just noisy all the time it's really how this is noisy just in the one the one <laughs> the one situation where it's dry and dusty 200 250 watts of input and with our standard recommended tension the belt starts becoming more efficient than a chain as you increase load uh, or, or, or torque uh, you're actually the chain becomes less efficient at higher loads and the belt maintains efficiency we, we typically say belts and chains are about 98 99 percent efficient when new installed uh, but there is a substantial difference when you get that out in the real world. As you're affecting your installation tension, either lower or higher, you are changing that amount of preload and you're changing the amount of load that you need to overcome that preload. So at a lower installation tension, you're you're affecting, you know, you, you have to put less wattage in to, to, get, to overcome that load. Whereas if you are installing it past our recommended limits or, or even out towards the top of those, those limits, you are a little less efficient at lower input loads. So somewhere around 200, 250 watts of input, but we're, we're talking, okay. we're talking in the matter of, of watts, four or five watts. We're not, we're not talking something that's substantial. Yes, you can feel if you have a high installation tension on the drive, um, but chains drop tension at a much higher rate when they wear or they're dirty or they're dry uh, to the effect that, that easily a chain within a, a single like cycle cross race can drop to below 92% efficiency relatively quickly in, in just rough conditions. And certainly tour divide riders, their chains are almost never clean. They, they may start the event in Banff by 10 minutes up the trail and certainly by the they get to British Columbia, their chain is filthy and not nearly as efficient as they as they think it is. How does how does the efficiency get affected by dirt on the on the gates belt then? Dirt dirt and debris because it doesn't need lubrication, uh, dirt and debris doesn't stick to a belt uh, that hasn't been lubricated. Uh, it tends to be self cleaning. And the, you know, if, if you're pedaling, one of the coworkers once put the sand across the belt and pedal it through, and you can feel the inefficiencies when doing that. That being said, it, because it is relatively self-cleaning, 
uh, it tends to to run pretty clean. And so you yeah, putting dirt and debris into the belt drive doesn't tend to last there. Also, if, if you need to clean it, uh, oftentimes, you know, a, a squirt from the water bottle uh, or a quick brushing and it's it's back to, to clean again. I will rub a bar of soap on it if I get the squeak. Does that seem like a reasonable thing to you guys? No problems? Yeah, we, awesome. we don't typically recommend lubrication. Usually in most circumstances for most pet types of belts, the lubrication is hiding a problem. Uh, it, it's, you know, you have worn parts or, or, or the drive is past the useful limit or misalignment or something, something's causing an issue. Most belt drives aren't operated in dirty conditions, uh, like, like the, the drive on a bicycle. And so we do see noise in very specific conditions, almost always off road, usually in dry, uh, soils. Colorado happens to be one of the places we <laughs> see noise. Uh, for, uh, more than in most places. In wet in wetter environments, it tends to not be as big of an issue. Uh, and so while normal recommendation is not to lubricate your belts, uh, we do say and allow you, lubrication for, for CDX belts, usually a dry silicone, but we've had all, all kinds of different people tell us about what works, what doesn't work from soap to squirt to yeah, all, all kinds of different stuff. So whatever works for you, as long as it's, it's not a strong detergent, it shouldn't be a problem. And even most cases, a strong detergent is not an issue. We do want to avoid uh, things like WD-40 uh, or other, other petroleum-based uh, lubricants, err on the side of caution, saying use something like a dry silicone. Yeah, it, it's usually bull dust, the very fine powdery sand that, that hangs in the air, you know, get some kind of squeaking noise. And sure. like you said, a squirt from the water bottle, but I need the water. So um, I just rub a little bit of soap on it and that will last longer in my found and easier to get than, um, than silicone. But that's awesome. Of course, conditions, load, you know, those are sort of the variables I would imagine, it, given that it is set up correct. What kind of lifespan are, do you think we're seeing? Okay, I'll give you an example because I, there's, a, there's a, fellow, uh, a fellow YouTuber with quite a large following. He's, Probably. he's very detailed. Yeah. And he'll say 30,000, I think, is his number. He changes the belt and the rings at the same moment. At least it's, it was up on his website not too long ago. For me, I feel like I'm at the lower end of the range. I've had two belts break, both of them kind of in the same situation. It's onto a steep hill. I don't feel like I've actually had time to put any real pressure onto them. When I look at them, it's not a, the break seems to have the strands coming out in kind of an angle, but maybe Ali's not experiencing that. Maybe with his snubber, maybe he's riding more roads than I do, stops and cleans, but that's dramatically longer than I'm. I would love to get that many kilometers. <laughs> yeah. If you look at Lee, uh, he gets, I'd say he gets closer to the top end of, of what we've seen. Watch him and he's, he spins a lot. Uh, he, he uses a very high cadence uh, compared to a lot of cyclists. And he is also, I think he said specifically in one of his videos that he's pretty meticulous about cleaning. Anytime that you're getting that debris out of there, you're, you're reducing the amount of wear that's causing. And most of the, most belt failures are actually caused through, through wear. Uh, the, the belt and the sprockets wear out over time instead of, uh, instead of failing through any sort of a tensile load. I mean, there's, there's obviously, of course, uh, external damage is, uh, is one that does happen as well. Whether you, you hit the back of the belt on a rock or if somebody in a shop accidentally uh, crimps it while, while doing some maintenance, all, all those things are possible. You know, we, we typically say for CDX in particular uh, that you see three times the life of a chain or more. Now, w why is that not a mileage or, or kilometers? Um, because mountain bikes do not have the same mileage and drive trains that commuters do. And the same belt is used across all of those different types of applications, including cargo and everything else. So that's why we don't ever quote a, a mileage or a, or a kilometer distance. Consistently, we'll see three times or more that the life. The, the question often comes in then next is, well, how long do chains last? And I, I would say that's very dependent on, on your, your particular uh, environment. Oftentimes, a, a commuter train is, say, 2,500 to 3,000 miles. I like how you answer that because people want a number. They like things to be this simple, but it's not like that. I mean, the, the wear and tear that I'm putting on doing this kind of riding is going to be much different than, you know, just going to get groceries or just going to the office. You don't want to get sweaty or... You know, you know, those those kind of different conditions, whether it's, uh, you know, you're in this, you know, beautifully 
clean summertime, you know, situation, or you're riding all year long and you're riding off road. So. Is there anything people need to do in terms of adjusting their riding style for belts? Depending on what sort of internally geared hub or what sort of um, some gearboxes or internally geared hubs might not shift as well under load. So it depends on what transmission on either end of the belt drive you have. You ride it just like any other bike. Right. Um, as far as the belt goes, there's no real difference in riding. I will admit my biggest gripe with Gates belt and with pinion is that it doesn't require more maintenance. And, and let me explain that for a second. Because I don't have to clean it and lubricate it all the time, I don't see other things that go on with my bicycle as I would in the course of that. And so I have to make an effort to sort of look over things and check. And I'm, I'm, things tend to sneak up on me. Um, you know, because normally I would be, I'd be down there looking at them, but I just don't have to, it just keeps running. So, and I think the other, the other issue that's really important, as we've discussed before, a, a wearing chain will wear other components and that doesn't really happen as much or at all, barely with the gates. And so I run them catastrophic failure. I don't replace them. Whereas I would have replaced multiple chains, you know, even on the Tour Divide, I would have gone at least through two chains and would have put a brand new chain on it to come down into Mexico. So there's three chains right, you know, simply right there. So you're, what you're saying lines up with my experience. It does last a very long time. Uh, you can look out for at the, at the root of the tooth. You can watch for cracking as your sprockets wear. Tooth will get a little bit thinner and you'll have different loading on the tooth of the belt. And after however many cycles, there is the potential for the root of the tooth to crack. So that'll start folding over if under load and you could have the tooth shear off. When you start seeing that happen, definitely it's time for a new belt. Um, but that's that's one of those things that you should look for occasionally when you're putting that type of mileage on. As far as the catastrophic failures across the back span of the belt, um, it could be from crimping. It could be from, as Ryan said, hitting a rock. It could be from uh, rolling off uh, and just one side of the belt gets damaged and then you're transferring your load on fewer carbon fiber strands and for you could for any instance you could reach the ultimate tensile strength and have that kind of failure that you were talking about right in terms of of where then am i correct in, in sort of understanding that when a chain wears that the, the pitch is actually changing subtly a little and bit that, that and then that in turn speeds up because i've taken you know you know as a young kid in my you know late teens early 20s couldn't afford it we had free wheels then and you know it buy it you know oh i need a new chain buy a new chain you put it on and then it, it might skip in a couple of gears and you'd need to ride it a little bit before it, it didn't skip in those especially in the in the smaller ones, if, if you use yep. them a bunch. So so that's basically what's happened is the pitch change. Does that happen? So the pitch on the belt stays the same. As they wear. Okay. Yeah. Because what I what I experienced with a chain, it's been a while now since I've ridden one. The chain wears, it's important to change it early so that I don't then have a knock-on damage to the rest of the components. Yeah, the chains both wear and they stretch a little bit as well. Um, and, you know, the, all the components are wearing against each other, which is, is kind of the reason for the stretch. Uh, and the, the belt doesn't become longer. You know, and that does bring up a good point, though, is the fact that when if you're if you're trying to be conservative with your cassette, for instance, uh, you're going to change your chain more often so that you don't have to replace all the components at once. Because but not just the chain, but also the sprockets are wearing as well. Uh, and for us, uh, the, the belt and the chain, or sorry, the belt and the sprockets tend to wear together at, at, a, at a relatively similar pace. And so we do recommend that when uh, when your belt has worn out and it's time for replacement, that oftentimes you're going to want to replace your sprockets as well. And it's pretty obvious. They, they start to get uh, pretty shark, uh, shark finned after some significant mileage. It, if the belt was to fail prematurely, 
uh, one, the sprockets are still relatively new or don't have any significant wear. That's not a problem to, to run a, a new belt on, on those used sprockets, but uh, typically they do wear together. So we do recommend that uh, when you replace one, oftentimes you want to replace all of them. With a chain, oh, you can just easily get it from a bike shop if it wears out. That's just not the case. It, was, it wasn't the case prior to COVID, and it's, and it's definitely not the case since COVID. You know, for me, I, I, you know, I have a, a racing background and road and track, and I like performance equipment, which this is. And so with a chain, I would tend to ride a fairly high end, maybe not the top racing level. But what it ends up being is that they're difficult to find. A shop might not stock these chains. If they do, they don't have that many. And on a mid-tail bike, I need a, an entire chain plus, a, it ends up being about 10 lengths or so. I need to buy a chain and then keep those links with me so that when I subsequently buy another one, I would have, I could have the pieces to extend it, right? People that race the Tour Divide, they can't go into a shop and expect, especially if it's one of these flat top chains from SRAM. And so for me, the idea of carrying a, a spare belt is not really an issue at all. It's simple to, to twist it and hold them up exactly like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it becomes quite compact and yeah, open it up and, and away I go. I, I can put it onto the bike. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And they're very lightweight compared to a chain. You know, any of them, all the maintenance issues are, are non-existent. Uh, pairing that with an internally geared hub, you've got, you've got something that's weatherproof, get you back, back and forth to work reliably. And then e-bikes came and e-bikes are, were huge and they're, you know, they're a huge part of our business and reasonably so. E-bikes wear through drive trains much faster than than regular pedal bikes oh. because you're putting in that that higher load pretty consistent. Um, and so we've been playing in that space for a long time now and having a great time. But you know the gearboxes like Pinion uh, really kind of coming into their own, and especially with their new Smart Shift things like that, uh, we uh, get to play with mountain bikes again, and that's that's <laughs> extremely exciting to us. And we we've, we've allowed for a long time now to talk about tensioners, and if, if you you'll see some. Uh, some of the different uh, tensioners that are out there, Pinion has their own tensioner, things like that. And that allows us to play with full suspension mountain bikes as well. And so uh, we are actually uh, sponsoring two separate teams this year, both the Gamex team and the Zerode team uh, that are that are competing in uh, UCI World Cup downhill. So on top of that, we have a uh, soft launch and uh, we'll have a bigger launch at Sea Otter uh, with all the details and everything. Uh, but we are announcing a 100,000 euro challenge to the first person in the pro level or the elite class that wins a downhill race. I know for sure it's successfully raced on the Tour Divide. So I don't know if there's a $100,000 check in, in, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in it for that, but it, it, uh, it certainly has done that. And, and not only, uh, but with a dog as well. So yeah, no, I, I, I definitely, that's, that's great news. That's amazing. That's, um, that's pretty cool. I've seen the Zero uh, bikes uh, on Instagram. And it's awesome that there's other manufacturer out there too. So it looks quite dramatic that this catastrophic failure of the Gates belt, but it's just not the whole story. The story is that it's been on there for a long time. It's had zero maintenance. And for me, because of how we're riding, that sort of ends up being the, the most logical to, to ride them until, you know, I, I lose a lobe, I uh, see that, you know, maybe at the root, like you were describing, that's new information to me. That's great. Or I see the catastrophic failure and that could be from roll off or mishandling or an in impact to rocks, I guess, are sort of the, the main issues that we'll see. Yeah. I, I think, I think that that kind of covers it really. I don't want to, I want to be respectful of your time guys. That's, that's, um, but we don't have other than like our binders and our, our manuals, our tech manuals, we don't necessarily have an audience or a way to get that message out instead of just responding to people. Uh, so it's it's nice yeah. to be able to uh, address some of the bigger, more common questions that that you've seen, that we've seen, be able to have some engineers describing it. My experience is that I, I get a great many kilometers out of these belts. I put in no maintenance to them. And uh, yeah, they're just, they're amazing. I mean, and it starts up a ton of conversations. People wonder what it is, but for your time, I, re I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, have a great day. All right, guys. Let's
cumplir, lo siento yo.